Welcome back everybody, I'm back, and today we're going to do a short little video talking about this gem. Before we start diving into this uh, abomination, if you will, make sure you're following me on Instagram, at MadMaxGuns, I'll have it right here for you. That way you get a little behind the scenes and like a heads up to what's going to be coming down on YouTube. I've been posting about this for a couple weeks now and you would have been aware it's coming. Just a good heads up for you. And also make sure you subscribe on the YouTube here, down there. And uh, that's just for obvious reasons. But let's get into it. So before I talk about what it is, I'll talk about why it is. Um, I was just going through my parts bin one day and I happened to realize that I had almost everything to build a complete rifle. I had a pistol, like a complete pistol lower, flopping around from when I got rid of my uh, HRT upper. And I had this here rail, and the upper came off my 300 blackout upper that disappeared, and like muzzle. Anyway, I wanted to build a part spin gun. So, what I didn't have, I gave myself a rule that I only had to break once. That Everything else that I needed had to come from like one of the Instagram story pages. Uh, I either traded or bought it from some people out there. And this is what we came up with. I knew from the beginning I was going to paint it gold just because um, it's hideous. I think it's funny. I used to like James Bond as a kid. But that's neither here nor there. So it essentially just became a, like an ugly meme gun. It didn't matter how well it functioned as long as it functioned. And it's gonna be like a loner gun in the future. I'm done shooting with it for now. But yeah, that's why it's here. Anyway, so let's get into it. I'm gonna start from the back here. SBA3 with the split fix from Lunar Concepts. Split fix is an absolute must if you run into SBA3. I want to try out the SBA4 because I had a SBA3 fail on me and tear and it gets all floppy down here, but I do want to try an SBA4 out. If you have used an SBA4, let me know what you think about it down in the comments. But moving forward, got a regular, I believe, uh, this is a six position buffer tube. Um, might have came with the SBA4, not sure. It was just something that I had. Uh, standard castle nut. The base plate's not staked because, well, look at the gun, I mean, I got a little Magpul QD sling base plate here. The lower is an Arrow X15, like a typical Arrow lower. I got, ooh, that's gross. Oh, right, forgot about that. Got the Geisley Super 42 buffer spring and buffer, The eight, it's an H1 buffer. Um, I've never really noticed a difference using the Geisley buffer and buffer spring, uh, but, you know, being the Geisley whore that I am, uh, I bought it a long time ago and it ended up in the parts bin, so take that for what it's worth. Down here, got a Magpul MOE grip, just a standard grip angle. I prefer the more vertical grip angles, but again, it ended up in the parts bin, so that's why it's here. The trigger itself is a CMC flat blade. Uh, three and a half pound single stage. Um, it's a drop in single stage trigger. It's pretty legit. It's nice, crisp. Let's see if I can. Oh, shit. I'm not going to go through it, but it's a single stage, nice little crisp break, and boom. The reset's fine. It's They've been less and less expensive these days. I still prefer Geisley two stage any day of the week, but it's, it's a neat little trigger, and if you find them at a good price, I'd say go for it. KNS anti-rotational pins. I had somebody write a huge paragraph as to why you shouldn't use them, and it makes sense. But again, it's on here because I had them. If you uh, have problems with your trigger pins walking out on you, you probably have a problem there somewhere. If it's a Geisley, you gotta use those little D-ring clips on the uh, the two-stage, like the more budget-friendly Geisley triggers. For the guy that keeps telling me to get a LaRue trigger because they're cheaper and two stage, I'm working on it. Alright, so you, just so you know, I'm working on it. 
Uh, regular lower parts kit. Got the bad lever because everybody needs one of those. Caught me some 416 mags just because I'm bougie. Sling, Ferro Concept Slingster. My personal favorite sling, ESD slings are good. Uh, I've heard great things about the T-Rex arm sling. But yeah, slings are slings. Um, there's one out there for you. The upper is an Anderson like naked upper. I don't know what it's actually called, but there's no forward assist, no dust cover. And surprisingly enough, I've had zero mount functions with this setup. Um, not a lot of rounds through it, uh, right around a thousand steel case and brass case, you know, due to the whole great ammo shortage of 2020. Hopefully we come out on the other side. All right. But yeah, so Anderson upper stripped. This was a, uh, like an old school Ambi. I, I got some video of when it shit out on me, but the latch on it just snapped. So the rest of my last shooting day with it was free like that with no latch. If anybody has a charging handle that they want to send my way, I'll trade you some Mad Max stickers for them. Slimes those DMs. But yeah, so busted S charging handle, need a new one. The one time I broke my uh, little rule for this build was with the bolt carrier. I had a full bolt carrier group that the gas key was unstaked so it wouldn't function right. Every time it would never go back into battery after shooting once and it just became a huge headache. But the firing pin and the cam pin and the firing pin retaining pin and the bullet, everything was good in it. So I gutted that. I just so happened to have a mil spec Colt, like an actual military issue Colt bolt that I don't know how I came into having it, but I had it. It was still sealed in the bag. It's like MP tester, HPI, or what MPI, all that good stuff. So it's a quality bolt. So the only thing I needed was a carrier. So I found this. I don't know what the brand is, but it's RCA and it cleans up really nice. And I've had zero problems with it so far. So happy with that. And it was less expensive than buying a whole bolt carrier group. So that's the one time I broke my rule. Up here, got the Holosun. 403. It's the red dot that I did a video on this a couple weeks ago. Yeah, it's built in China. So is like everything else in this country. Get over it. Um, I've had this forever. This has been through like a lot of different guns and a lot of rounds. And it's only on its second battery. And it works fantastic. Um, again, no problems at all with this. If you're looking for a red dot for a gun that's not going to be going to war and you don't have a lot of money to spend, Holosun 403 is uh, good to go. The 503s are nice. I got a 515 I'm doing a review on now. Uh, more on that in the future. But moving forward up into the uh, barrel and such, I got an MCMR that I've just had forever. It's a 10 inch rail. Really light. I wouldn't call it super strong, but it's a very good m -lock rail. BCM CAG grip, M-Lock. My, it's definitely my favorite foregrip. I'm trying to get away from using foregrips, but for like an actual, like, is it a vertical foregrip? Is it a hand stop? I don't know. It's a kinesthetic angle grip, says BCM. But I'm a big fan of it. You can, like I've said in videos prior, you can grab it good, pull it into you, and you got a good base with it. You can swing it around all day. And this dildo up here, is a Streamlight HLX Pro, a ProTech. I don't know, it's bright as shit and it strobes when it works. There it goes, like that, going out to party, right? It's mounted here on a Magpul M-Lock angle Picatinny mount. Uh, it's hideously mounted and it only works half the time. It's loose too. Um, once this video is done, this is probably gonna go back in the parts bin because it doesn't need to be on here anyway. See, not working. Um, when they work, bright as hell. If you're cool with having a very large um, object hanging off the front of your barrel, I would say go for it. They're cheap. Again, made in China. But you can get better 
side. I, I want to try Mod Light out, but I have Surefires and I prefer them. Anyway, the barrel here, I got this from some guy on Instagram and I, he didn't know the brand. I couldn't figure out the brand. Um, it has a roll mark in it of BC. I don't know if that was like Bear Creek Arsenal or Bravo Company. If it was Bravo Company, that'd be kind of cool. But if you know what the roll mark BC is for on barrels, uh, drop in the comments and let me know because I'd like to know. It's surprisingly not terribly inaccurate from like 85 yards on a steel target without like a fixed aiming point. With the red dot, I was shooting like inch and a half with steel case for, so that, I don't know, at 100 yards, that would be like right around two inches. But again, that's with the red dot and not like a fixed aiming point and like not a good base. So I'm uh, pleasantly surprised with its accuracy and you could probably push that to 300 yards, no problem. I've only taken it to 120, but that's neither here nor there. Again, this isn't like a go to war gun. This is a fucking meme. Anyway, up front here, got a, uh, the Surefire, it's the Legacy Break, the MK or MKB MBK 556. It's the old muzzle brake before the SOCOMs came out. It works really well. It's really loud and has a lot of concussion. And that goes along with the whole theme of this gun of being very obnoxious. So that's what this is. Um, that's why I made it because I have pretty much all the parts there and I wanted, you know, to have like a fun gun and, you know, a golden gun. I don't know. It's terribly annoying. It's a good loner gun for here on out. Um, not that I would want to be next to somebody shooting it because, again, the concussion is terrible. Is it necessary? Absolutely not. But, you know, it's fun. So that's what it is. It functions quite well. Again, about a thousand rounds, maybe a little under of steel and brass case and no malfunctions. Um, I probably won't be shooting this very much more. It won't be like a regular gun in the rotation that I take out because it's obnoxious. Um, again, loner gun. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. If you got any questions about this, drop them in the comments. Make sure you share away. I'm getting close to 5,000. I'm going to do some sort of giveaway uh, once I hit 5,000 subs, so help with that. As always, if you liked the video, hit the like button. If you didn't like the video, eat a dick. Make sure you sub. Make sure you follow me on Instagram. Make sure you do all that fun stuff. Share away if you want. Let's try to get this channel a little bit bigger. And... I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.